Hey guys, Marshall here again. Uh, I'm going to do a walkthrough video for the Legends Info plugin version 1.4, and uh, I'm going to dive right in here. Uh, so I've got the the archive file right here that I'm just going to extract, and once you download the actual plugin, you'll have something like this. <coughs> Uh, there's a setup program to make life easy on you. Uh, I would recommend just running that. It would install all these files in their appropriate directories. If you don't want to run the setup, then you'll need to put these in their appropriate directories. The DLLs in the plugins folder, hack and hack folder, mod to mod folder, and so on and so forth. So, I would suggest just running the install wizard. It's a little bit. It'll save you a bunch of effort. And it's just next, next, next all the way through. Pretty simple stuff. It will um, create uh, a, a desktop icon for the manual, and uh, that would probably be one thing you want to start looking at right away. Finished. Okay, once you've got that installed, uh, just fire up Toolset. You don't want to have Toolset running when uh, when you do the install. These um, these files here again, you can put them in manually and uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you take a look at the manual and go through through that. I'm going to touch on a lot of the points in the manual but not every point so to get the full uh, value of the product you're going to want to make sure you uh, hit the hit up the manual. So I'll move this over here. Now we're in the tool set and we've got the plugin installed so the very first thing we want to do is install the resources so we'll go file, import, and in our Everyone of Nights 2 directory you'll find an ERF folder that's been created if it's not already there and in there you'll find a leg underscore info dot ERF file let's just import that and click OK. Now will import all the script scripts and things that you'll need for the info plugin uh, the next thing you want to do once you've uh, once you've got the uh, the resources installed is to confirm that the plugin itself is actually visible. <clears throat> and as you can see here, I see the Legends Info plugin and Legends Master Configurator. If you don't see those, you want to select View Options and make sure that Load All Plugins under Allow Plugins is selected. So these are two plugins. The Legends Master Configurator comes with every Legends plugin, whether it's crafting, quest, banter, loot, no matter what, it'll always come with one of these. <clears throat> if you already have it, you don't have to install that part. You can do a custom installation and leave that part off. Um, but it'll always come with two. It'll come with the Master Configurator and it'll come with the actual plugin for whatever um, plugin you've, you've downloaded. For your uh, first time use, you're going to want to fire up the the master configurator always to configure that and then you want to configure your actual plugin with with that one. So now that we got the resources installed we'll go ahead and fire up that master configurator. As you can see here it already knows I've got the info plugin uh, available so we're going to definitely want to activate it and uh, it also notices that none of the other plugins are actually installed in this module so it's not going to bother uh, highlighting those making them available. So like uh, most, we'll put in our database. If you don't have a MySQL database available to you, you should probably grab the free MySQL server from the mysql.com website. Install that locally on your machine because um, pretty much all Legends plugins use a database in some part, not fully sometimes, but some piece will probably use the database. So uh, because we design with MySQL in mind and NNWNX in mind, um, you're going to want to make sure that you're developing with a database handy uh, if you can't you know connect directly to your to your main Neverwinter Nights database connect to a development database if you can and uh, and work there and then export uh, after you're done developing and have the administrator or whatever import your data so we're going to put in our connection information and you only have to do this once once you have this in there, even if you install other plugins, you don't have to put your database options in again. You'll have to come in here to activate your new plugin, but you won't have to fill this in every time. So I'm just going to fill this information in here. Uh, two. And we'll hit 
test. Oh no, I got a bad password in there. Let's try that one. There we go. So we're good. All right. Oh, uh, one thing that we'll want to do, we're going to do, is just uh, just to be sure. There's three buttons here. Um, some plugins require an on enter, on client enter script in every single area in the module. Some require an on client exit, and some require particular module scripts. If this is a new module, it's easy. You just go ahead and use these buttons when you need them. Um, if you don't, review the manual. It tells you when you should be using these and when you shouldn't. There are certain times when you should not use these buttons, so the manual will tell you that. Um, the info plugin does not use any particular module scripts, so we'll leave it. It won't actually put any scripts in place unless it actually uses them in the plugins you have active. So I'm just going to do that anyway. Finish. And that is it for the um, master configuration. So the next thing we'll do now, and again, uh, future plugins that you might want to install along with this, you won't have to do that part again. So we'll go Legends Info plugin and file and configure. So in the <coughs> configuration for the info plugin itself, uh, the screen looks like this. Uh, there's only two options, the crier count. This is basically how many times a crier um, will repeat a message before he moves on to the next message in his queue. And uh, I'll get into that later when we do criers. And database options, uh, this is the prefix for all the info. Uh, base tables just for organizational purposes. So I'm going to leave these at default, so that's fine. And we're done with configuring that. So now we're all installed and we're ready to actually make use of it. So the first thing we're going to have to do is create an area. And we're just going to call it info area. Like that. And we'll make it tiny, so we don't need a big spot. And here we go. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is uh, the most simple of uh, information um, exchanges, and that is when a user or a player walks across a particular trigger, we would like some information displayed. That's that's the simplest uh, trigger we can have. So what we'll do is we'll go in here under triggers, and you can see when we install the resources, it created a couple of triggers for us. We just need a trigger, uh, a Legends info box for this kind of uh, setup. So I'm going to put it right in front of this start area here, like so. And we'll move that out of the way. Actually, no, I'm going to keep that for a second. Um, one thing, because uh, triggers are not actually seen in game like this, I'm going to put a couple of placeables down, uh, just so I know where where it is. And I'm going to put uh, a couple of these mushrooms down like so the corners that way I know when I when I load up this module I know where the trigger actually is so I'm gonna move that back like that there it's straightforward and simple so now I want to configure this trigger this information trigger uh, all I have to do is click on the trigger select it in game and then go plugins info plugin file edit trigger instance this is the uh, trigger instance configuration, so right now I'm configuring that trigger. Um, descriptive name, I'm just going to leave that as is. I'm going to change the unique identifier. Every trigger needs a unique identifier and one, <clears throat> one easy naming convention that ensures your triggers are unique is uh, probably the area tag. You know, uh, info area, something like that, with a number on the end. You know, you're not going to have 40 info triggers in an area. Well, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but it's easy to keep track of them if you do that and just put a number on the end. Uh, the message for PC, this is what's actually going to appear for the player when they run over it, so I'm going to say um, you've discovered a lovely mushroom patch. There we go. <laughs> and I'm going to leave all these other options as is for now. So we'll finish and quit. And that's it. Now I'm going to load this uh, module up in game and take a quick look at it and you'll see what this trigger actually does. And we'll cut here and be right back. Okay, so we're in game here and as you can see there's our four little mushrooms so we know our trigger is right in front of us. So I'm going to step inside and see what happens. 
you've discovered a lovely mushroom patch. So, uh, as you can see, our info box worked perfectly, and down here in the local chat, of course, you see the same information. So just in case we missed it up there, or maybe we're in the middle of a fight or something, we, we can scroll back and see that. I can always walk back and forth, getting the same information over and over and over again. There's no limits on how often I can use this. And we can, you know, put this in a in you know some places that'll help remind a player where they are, you know, the, the lost well or the or cave or whatever we want. So next step is going to go back in the tool set and modify this trigger and see what else we can do with it.